Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday and welcome back to my shop. So I've got some good news for you guys, but I've also got some bad news for you guys this week. Bad news is it has been an insanely busy work week for me and I usually get projects done for the channel a little bit at a time each day after work. And I just honestly have not had anything left on the tank this week to really make any real progress on the project that we started last week. The good news is I did get a bunch of parts printed and the parts are here from Send Cut Send. I also got the longer pieces of 2020 rail that we need. These are gonna to need to be cut down to, I think the same length as these guys. The bandsaw will make quick work of that. And I did get a bunch of pieces printed. Now, I don't think all of these are gonna be usable as is. Some of these are gonna to need to be reprinted for various reasons, but we should still be able to see how things fit in the panels. And we have got a big box of parts here, courtesy of Send Cut Send. So let's get this up on the workbench because I am dying to see what these look like. And it is 6.40 p.m. on Friday, the day that this video is supposed to come out. So I'm not sure how much we're gonna get done today, but let's see how much we can get done. Wow, these parts look amazing, at least what I can see so far. First of all, it looks like they've got cardboard packed between every single layer, which is awesome. And I can only really see the top panel here so far and the logo cut out, but these look great. Let me get the rest of this kind of unpacked and we'll see what we got. All right, well, everything's unpacked. Looks like it's all here. This material is really pretty cool. I mean, I guess it's what I expected. It is a sandwich of plastic in the center and then two thin sheets of aluminum and it is all just sandwiched together as sort of one piece. And it looks like the cuts are really good. I kept this piece out because there is two 3D printed parts that we can just kind of quickly try in here to see if they do actually fit. So let me get you guys on a tripod, let's try it. So this is actually the rear panel of our enclosure. So it should fit the set of double sliding doors for access to the rear of the machine and for uh, cords to come through down here when this is closed. And yep, that fits. And then this is for our exhaust. So this guy should fit through, yeah, let's see, this way. And the ring goes on the other side. And yeah, that fits as well. Okay, so the rear panel and the parts for the rear panel are good. Let's set this one aside. This panel should be for the side window and the side window should just end up larger than this. Uh, but I do actually have, I have a drill guide I made for this that we can test in this hole. Let me grab that. All right, so here's the actual frame for the window. This is gonna go on from the other side, but I mean, that looks right. But this one should actually slip in there and allow us to drill the holes that we need for the other piece. And yeah, that fits, that fits perfectly. Let's actually go take a look at all the additional pieces that I designed for this that I do have printed and ready to go. So most of the additional pieces I designed are actually to help us with the assembly process itself. Uh, for example, if we look at the, the door here on the front, we have the upper portion, the lower portion, and the inner frame of the door. Well, that has to get attached to this somehow. Now we don't want to attach it from the front. I mean, I guess we could, but then we'd have exposed fasteners. So if we look at the back of these parts, we'll just hide the, uh, the frame and panels here. Uh, you can see there's screw holes all along the back of this for this to get secured. Well, we need holes drilled through that front panel uh, to pass screws through uh, to actually tighten into these holes. So if we go look at this piece here, you can see this is essentially our drill guide for that. So this would actually go in from the rear of the panel and then we just pass the drill uh, right through these holes and all of our holes will be in the right place for the screw holes that are in the panel. Uh, same thing for the side window up here. Uh, this is the drill guide for that. This actually just pops in again from the inside. Uh, this will essentially position it in place because this is the exact same shape as our hole through the side of the panel. And then we just pass the drill right through these holes and they will already be in the right place then for us to attach the inside panel. So if we get rid of the door, you can see, uh, it's a little bit tricky to see what's going on here, uh, but this actually has a recess in it to hold our laser safety glass 
uh, in exactly the right position. So if I get rid of the panel, it might be easier to see. Yeah, if we swing this around, that's still a little bit tricky to see. Wow, there we go. You can see the recess that the, the laser safety glass sits in, uh, and that is essentially flush with this front face. And then once this is screwed in place, that will keep the window uh, not only held in place, but also aligned in the right spot. So, all right, let's head back down to the bench and start getting this together. All right, so here is my drill guides for the door. That's one in. Yeah. It fits, doesn't seem like it's hanging up anywhere, so that is good. And here is our side vents. They go like that and like that. Yeah, plenty of clearance on those guys. I do actually have some door, well, not the, the, the two-part door frame itself printed, but I don't have the supports removed yet, and that is a whole other story. We might not actually get to that until next week. But knowing that everything fits in these guys, I guess we could get the overall enclosure together. All right, we've got to get these longer ones cut down to the right length, and I want to make sure that we get all four at exactly the right length. So what I think I'm going to do is set up the bandsaw, and we'll cut all four to length at the same time. So we're at the back of the bandsaw, and you can see I've got four clamps together, and I set a square on the back, and tried to get them lined up as best I can, and then clamped them. So hopefully we'll end up with four pieces at the exact same length. So now all I've got to do is just find my scribe mark over here, get the blade lined up with that, and we'll make these cuts. And you could just cut these to length with a hacksaw or a circular saw. I mean, they're just aluminum. Anything is gonna cut this. I guess, depending on what you cut them with, you might end up deburring them. The saw I used did a pretty nice job. I didn't do any cleanup to the end of this at all. Focus, maybe. Yeah, you can see that is, that's right off the saw. And it honestly looks pretty good. I'm not doing anything to that. I guess we should probably make sure that our panels actually fit in the slots for these guys. Yeah, Any different if I rotate it, no. And that actually fits really nice. There's basically no play there at all. So we'll have a little bit of play once I tear off the protective plastic material from each side, but that's a good fit. All right, I think the next step is to actually go ahead and build the frame out of these guys. And some of the panels will need to slip in as we're building the frame. So I'm gonna get you guys set up on the tripod. I'll put some music on and you can watch me put this together sped up. Just realized I'm skipping a step here. So these ones that were already cut to the right length are threaded in the end for the type of corner pieces that we have. These ones that we just cut obviously are not. So I'm gonna have to tap those. I think they're probably drilled to the right size already. I'm guessing, but we'll measure that and I'll get these tapped out.
check this out. Frame is together and panels are on. And I gotta say, I think it looks stunning. You can really see here in the reflection on the side panel, these panels are like the perfect balance between like a matte and a gloss. They just, they look really clean. I wasn't sure what to expect. I was hoping they weren't gonna be super glossy and they're not. They're like, I guess satin. Really, really look sharp. Put some lights inside just so you guys can kind of see inside. Wasn't without a few problems. I don't know if you guys caught when I was tapping the four pieces that we cut. I got lazy and I tried to just use the spiral tap dry in the aluminum and I almost ruined two of them, but was able to save them. I tapped the rest with WD-40 and just blowing out the tap between each one and they all came out really nice. One of the panels also, I didn't catch it when I was unboxing it. I think it's maybe that corner over there. Uh, one of the corners was a little bit skewed Maybe the box got dropped in shipping. Fortunately, I was able to straighten it out just with uh, some of my smooth jaw wrenches and it did go down into place. And I noticed one tiny imperfection here on the side. Fortunately, the matte finish hides it pretty well. I don't know if that was uh, in shipping as well, but I mean, otherwise, like, I, yeah, it's, <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm absolutely loving it and I'm even more excited now to uh, finish the design for holding the, uh, the laser safety glass and the small one up here and reprint the parts that I'm not happy with. I'll get more into that next week. Uh, I had a real challenge with the supports and a couple people did make some suggestions in the comments of last week's video about how to potentially cut them into multiple parts, but because of the cross section of them, it, they really do need to be printed as a single piece. I mean, I guess you could print them as two pieces, but it wouldn't be as sturdy as you would expect when you put it together because part of the, uh, one of the sides would just be super, super thin. The only other issue I encountered was, and this is my own doing, I was so concerned that these panels would be too large uh, that I did shrink the overall dimensions by, I think a millimeter on each side, just because I really didn't wanna deal with having to try and cut these down if they didn't fit in our frame. And these have a little bit of play. Like I can, I can probably lift this panel up, like that two millimeters <laughs> that I designed into it, which means when it sits all the way down in here, we do have a very small gap at all of the top corners, which I'm not a big fan of. And I think what I might do is some of the smaller parts like these vents here are just gonna be secured in place with like a, like a black silicone caulk. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do the same thing uh, up in the corners. I don't wanna actually secure these panels into the rails entirely, but what if we just put a little bit of caulk up in the corners? Not only will that fill that gap, but it'll also keep these panels from shifting around as I move this guy. I mean, they, they, they can't come out of the tracks. I mean, they're, they're captured in there. They can't go anywhere, but they can flex a little bit, which I guess once this guy's in place, wherever I set it down, it's not gonna be an issue. But yeah, I think not only will it close these gaps, but it'll keep the panels from moving around. And then if I ever do disassemble this in the future, uh, it won't be a big deal, especially if I take the top off first, it won't be a big deal uh, to just pull those out, uh, you know, that little bit of caulk up in the corner uh, to get this apart. Well, guys, as much as I would like to keep going on this, and I'm sure you would like to see more happen this week, I think we're going to have to stop here because the only parts that I'm satisfied are at, you know, final version are the ones that are on the bench. Everything else, while I have, you know, iterations of them, I don't have what I would consider to be my final versions of them yet. And I really don't want to put these parts in because... I'm not sure what we're gonna to wanna to reach through to get the other parts in. Uh, like I might wanna reach through that opening in the back uh, to put the screws in on the other side for the door, as an example. Although I guess we could probably do that through the bottom. So there's not gonna be a bottom on this. Whatever table or surface you set this enclosure on is essentially gonna make up the bottom of the enclosure. And that's on purpose because otherwise, we'd really have to, I guess, assemble this without the top on it and then somehow lower the laser down in from the top and then put the top on. And we'd have to go through that same process every time we wanted to move this because this enclosure plus the laser is really gonna to be too heavy to move. And on top of that, while I wanna use the enclosure as much as possible, there are gonna be instances where I have something that just does not fit on the bed of the laser and we need to swing the gantry over to the side or that just physically doesn't fit inside the enclosure even if it fits on the table of the laser. So I wanna be able to lift this whole enclosure off over the top of the laser to be able to use it without the enclosure. 
And some of the parts, I guess actually this, I don't have any iteration for this because I did actually completely forget to, to, uh, to design the, the holder for uh, the safety window up here at the top. Well, I'd also love to hear from you guys down in the comments how you think we should cut the laser safety window. The last one of these that we built, that other enclosure, I ordered the piece of laser safety glass cut to size so I didn't have to cut it. This one, since I bought it used, we're gonna have to cut this into three pieces. It's gotta get cut up here and then here. I'm not sure how to cut this. I really don't want it to, uh, to break. Like, I mean, there's a number of different ways we could do this. The table saw comes to mind, but the last time I cut a piece of, it's probably plexiglass on the table saw, uh, some of it splintered apart. Now that was a really old piece of plexiglass um, and maybe I wasn't using the right blade, but what do you guys think? What other ways could we cut this safely? Because this is a really expensive window. Uh, I think I paid only about $125 on eBay for this secondhand, but if I was to just order a piece of laser safety glass that is actually rated correctly for this laser, uh, this is probably a $1,000 or more piece of laser safety glass. So I don't want to mess this up. I was thinking since it's really thin, maybe we could just score it with a utility knife and snap it. I don't know. Let me do it down in the comments. What do you guys think? How would you cut that uh, without cracking or shattering any of it? Well, guys, it's almost 10 p.m. here, so I probably ought to stop walking around and staring at this thing and uh, actually go start editing the video so you guys have something to watch. I uh, really appreciate you guys hanging out in the shop with me while we got this together. And yeah, I'm a little disappointed too that we didn't get further on it, but hopefully we'll get this wrapped up next week and maybe we'll even get to start playing with that 100 watt MOPA fiber laser. Uh, thanks again to Send Cut Send for supplying the panels for this build. I could not be happier with those. And thank you to everyone that supports this channel on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys and thank you all for watching this video. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's all functional printing and the design and engineering that goes along with just sort of making and 3D printing in general. So if you guys like that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. You guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.